Hello and welcome to my new video. Today we'll unpack some chemicals and the storage solutions what I use in my darkroom. So I also bought some new chemicals from the new brand for me. Because most of you actually suggested as a good one. So I bought the Bellini Array 4 kit and I also bought Bellini C41 kit. Some folders, some storage and also get some small present. So this is around 200 euros of purchase. And this is usually what people don't really understand about color film and film photography in general. First of all, you need to buy a lot. And secondly, you need to buy a lot for future use. So for example, these folders and the storage for the film and for the paper, I will probably use for the next few years, maybe three or even four years. About chemicals, C41 chemical, it's around 10 to 12 films. So it's a supply for next probably year for me. And about array for chemistry, it's a 5 liters, and in my practice I'm kind of a shoot, not really a lot, but print kind of a lot, but in comparison I think it's nothing. And for me now it's only one folder with the photos, and it's so much photos to print and so much photos to make. And I think this 5 liter solution what I bought from Bellini as a kit, it's just overkill and I probably will use it for next year or two. And my collection of photos grows over the time and when I start to digging inside the folders and put all of my photos in order, I actually can see how I improved in the photography and also how I improved in the printing. Lately, with the relocation to the Denmark, I don't really have a lot of time for filling up the projects and spend time directly making photography and make photos with the different types of films and different types of the preparations for the project. But I hope it will change soon and I still need to service my Hasselblad 501C because sometimes it has a sticky shutter, so it's just a problem with the body part of my Hasselblad. I'm thinking actually at some point get to the repair of the cameras by myself but I don't want to start with my Hasselblad out of the batch and I just want to start with something more or less simple and understand the process in general because I think in future it's really good skill which you cannot really avoid if you shoot with the film cameras because I use mechanical cameras, I think the longevity of these cameras is a little bit better but in the same time you need to lubricate them more often and the technology there and precision there it's a little bit more analog and the timing and the all settings in the camera actually drift over the time of life of the camera and since i'm mostly shooting on the voidlander i'm getting in the feel that i also need a voidlander camera and a voidlander rangefinder for some reason i look at them in early 2015 or something like this and they cost around 200 euros and at that time I thought like, yeah, I don't really need this camera. And now I'm thinking, and the price difference is just dramatically changed, but still great cameras. For some reason, some people bashing on them that the rubber is actually falling apart or something like this. But I think with the connection with the Voigtlander lenses, it's just amazing kit. And probably the loading on the cameras of Leica, I'm not a big fan of. First of all, you need the two hands, and secondly, you have too many moving parts, and I don't really like it's not kind of a feels and sounds reliable, but I think it's another story. Let's start looking what I have in the box for Array 4 kit. First of all, I really like the bottles. They have a great lid, and it's a free solution kit, so I need an additional bottle for my chemicals. It is pretty standard Array 4 process. And I'm still wondering what is Array and I think it's from Rapid because it's C41 is also a C41 Array process so it's a Rapid process of C41. And I also really like that it's two solution for development because developer also kind of have more problems than the bleach fix and it degradate over time much easier and the storage of the developer is more important than the storage of the blakes. I also start with the same preparation of 250 milliliters of each solution because I just get used to it and I think it's much easier to prepare solutions in my Yobo cylinders. I think in future if you want to increase the precision and the just preparation of the solution make it a little bit easier, 
you can buy easy chemical dosing system just dose 25 milliliters and dose water and just make it to the mark and it's quite nice and easy and fast in the chemical use but because i make a solutions once per never it's not really important for the home lab but so far this solutions and this type of preparation i really adore and i think the bellini gets all the points and if it performs exactly the same in a development for now this kit will be my standard kit for all the chemical development so now all of my bottles is fresh and i actually clean up the yoba system itself the biggest problem with the yoba system i think it's just a hard water and the sediment on the sides. I found a good source of the distilled water, but for this time I just don't have access. So next time for the preparation of the C41 in the next videos, I will use pure water and I think it will really increase storage time for the old chemicals and purity of the final results. So today I will make experiment on the same batch of film. It's a 500T film. And I'm thinking for future I will buy probably whole stock of 500T film and I will home develop it with the Bellini Photo Kit for ECN2 development because I really like the results and the combination of the ECN2 process with the Array 4 printing. And for now let's find the focus and start printing the test print. As usual for this magnification I set up larger on F11 and I will start with the 3 seconds interval for each window and usually with my practice I have exposure around 10 seconds so let's see if the final development works and everything looks and works fine only one a little bit strange thing that is 3 minutes the last rinse and I think I will just skip it for the first test strips and test prints and keep this 3 minute wash of the stabilizer only for the final prints. One problem in my setup is actually I need to wash the drum after all the chemicals and I need to dry the drum. And if you're using stabilizer you need additional step of the washing the fresh drum and dry it additionally and you cannot really use just the water. But in general I also really like the final stabilizers and any types of surface agents which is added in the list last solutions. Because it's dry off clean and you have no problems with the development and also you have no problems with the final results with the scratches and things like this and you never touch the emulsion side. And because I use the settings of the 60, 60 and 20 in the Cyan channel, I get the really close results. Probably it's a little bit too yellow on my test print, but in general, I think I just need to dial up the yellow channel. And for the first print, if everything works fine, I will get the final really good result. But for now, let's rinse the drum from the stabilizer, pour it in the waste and dry the drum. As always, I will put my settings in the lab journal and I think I need a little bit better solution for the lab journal because it requires folders and requires a little bit more structures, so kind of a template. Otherwise, I'm losing touch a little bit with the storage of this test strips, but I really know that it helps in my production and really helps to improve my printing results over time. So let's change the yellow channel and make a bigger print and see if I get the proper result. I know how the scan looks like for this print, but I want a little bit warmer touch because it's a night print and I don't want to overcorrect it. I still want the warmth of the halogen lamps inside the building. And sometimes if you have a perfect white balance, it's really losing this touch of the night and because you never see it with your eyes like you see it with the camera. And nowadays I think it's completely lost with the modern photography, especially with the phones, which trying to correct everything to be as a daylight. So your real yellow light is actually looks not really yellow. And the final result really depends how you tilt your camera. But in my case, I really like the fixed results and I really like the warmth of the real yellow lights. You can definitely say that it's closing hours and the guy 
on the register is actually cleaning up and coffee place is already closed and it's kind of a last peek what you can find out in the late night streets in the Copenhagen. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.